Hello, everyone. So I think uh, uh, Dave and team set up a nice stage on developer productivity matrix and Dora. Probably this talk is going to be a bit deeper in a specific area, uh, what we need to do in order to in improve developer productivity and how we can uh, improve the developer experience, uh, which is directly correlated with the developer productivity. So let's get started. Uh, so today what we are gonna talk about is what is developer productivity, how developer experience is important, how do you create a good de developer experience, then we will dive into uh, challenges for a new developer. If a new developer joins your organization, what challenges they can face in, what we can do in order to solve uh, the challenges they face in, how do we make their experience better, and then finally, how do we measure the ROI? If we make the developer experience better, how, what does it impact to? This is me. Uh, I work for Adobe as a lead software engineer in developer platforms. Uh, so our agenda is to enable Adobe developers to write better software faster. And I'm also a CD Foundation ambassador and uh, founder of Sunnyvale Java user group. So we run monthly Java user sessions. And I also contribute to 20 plus open source project, active contribution. So yeah. So let's get started. So what is developer productivity? And before even I go there, I want to ask a question. How many of you are developers in this room? A lot. And when you try to contribute to a project, how many times you feel like you are being productive or there is friction and things like that? If you have attended the Dora talk just before this, there were a lot of uh, quotes flashing in like, hey, there is friction, I am frustrated, there is a lot of friction and all. So how many of you have felt frustrated when you're trying to contribute a code and you see there is not adequate information or there is not adequate steps to be followed? I see a couple of hands. So that is why um, when we try to measure productivity, uh, productivity is uh, ambiguous because there is a lot of confusion around how do you measure someone who is productive. So in order to measure the productivity, there are different mechanisms, but we have to settle down to a definition. So I am quoting a definition from LinkedIn's developer productivity and happiness framework, which was open source. And in terms of developer productivity, they, they mentioned like when developers are able to effectively and efficiently accomplish their intentions regarding software systems. Just, just uh, be mindful, they are highlighting two words, effectively and efficiently. Now, what does effectively means or efficiently means? So efficiency is always related to the number of frequency of doing a task and how, what, how much time you take to complete that task. So it means when, it, when in terms of software development, you need to mention how frequently you are able to contribute and how, what is the overall time taken. Now effectively, effectively is an intention, whatever you wanted to carry it out, whether you were able to do that or not. So it can be the case like you are efficient in deploying a software into production, but what if it is you are introducing too much bugs or there are so many outages? So you are not effective, but you are efficient. So that's what we, uh, we are saying. Um, now, why developer experience is important. I think there are a lot of conversation and chatter with platform engineering. We need to focus on developer experience, making it better. So essentially it, it again goes to the direction where we want to make a better developer experience for the developers to reduce friction. How many times you have seen like, oh, some build is broken, I need to go, I need to talk to some other team and things like that. Then there are burnouts, burnouts means there is a term called context switching in terms of developers. So anytime when you are waiting for a step to complete in your software delivery process, if you are waiting, you are wasting your time and oftentimes developer go and context switch, switch to something else, which ultimately, uh, ultimately reduces their productivity. Higher, higher quality code. So if your developer experience is better, if you have a defined path and if you know how to carry out your operation, there are chances you will produce higher quality code because you are not context switching and you, you know where to go. 
Cognitive load. I think this is one of the terms we often don't talk about much. But if you have to, in order to get your job done, if you need to go to 10 different places, it's like a lot of cognitive load. And oftentimes, uh, you fail. You feel, oh, what should I do next? For example, I, I believe we all have seen that like your uh, buck tracking system is Jira. Your log monitoring is something else. Your, uh, for developers, your primary uh, your main friend is IDE because we love to stay there. We do our coding. Your CI runs somewhere else. Your CD runs somewhere else. So it's all hops. And ultimately, it, all, it directly impacts the developer productivity. Now, how do you create a developer experience? So this is one of our jobs as part of Adobe's developer platform team. We want to create a good developer experience. Now, how do you start if you are starting your journey? First of all, you need to identify your target customers, which are developers, and you need to determine what are the main tech stacks. You need to identify the common workflows. What are the, what are the paths which developers are taking in order to deliver their software? As in, there can, what are your developer personas? Your developer personas can be web developer. Your developer personas can be desktop developers. Or nowadays, a lot of experience goes into cloud native ex developer experience as well. You need to identify bottlenecks. And I again look at Dave, Nathan, and Amanda. So this is where the, uh, the, this is where the DORA also comes into picture. You also need to determine like at the team level where your bottlenecks are. Because in order to understand and solve your developer's problem, you need to understand where the bottlenecks are. Identifying the tools and processes involved. So what does it take for a developer to deliver their software into production? You need to identify that, how many hops they are jumping in. And then the last important piece is making information discovery very easy. So when, uh, as a new developer, if a new developer is joining your org, how is scattered your information is, it directly impacts their productivity. So if, if you have a defined path, like where your information is, what steps they need to take in, it can, it can make their job a lot easier. Now we all, we all are aware about this. This is a typical software life cycle. You have different phases like code, build, test, deploy, or monitor involved. So you start coding, then you build your software, you test it, you deploy it, and you monitor it. But if you see here, there are, still here are a lot of tools and phases involved within a specific step. So in the code, you have a lot of systems like you have IDEs involved, you have Copilot, GitHub involved to contribute code. You have, uh, you have in the build system, you have plenty of build steps and build systems involved. Same for test and deploy and monitor as well. Now, if you, if you look carefully, all of these phases, the developers are jumping hops to hop. Probably it can be the case, it's not all developers' responsibility, but with platform engineering, that role is diminishing. So as a platform engineering or developer experience team, we need to solve this problem so that developers don't have to jump hop to hops. Now again, this is again depicting what all tools and technologies involved. So this is a typical developer landscape uh, at Adobe. Uh, there, are other, there are other tools involved also, but this is where you can see there are plenty of tools, plethora of tools involved in each of the phases. There, there, are, there are tools related to secret management, there are tools related to log matrix traces. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, all right, we are back. Yeah, so there are, uh, probably didn't like the tools. <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, tools and platforms involved in log matrix traces. You can see the deployment, testing, build and code. So what's wrong with that? Now you see there are a lot of workflows which are simple and do not need any of these underlying complexity. Not every developer need to deal with all these unnecessary workflows and tools. And it also introduces the higher cognitive load. Then as a developer, we love our IDEs. We, that is the first place we start contributing our code to. So a no, lot of these developer workflows are driven by non-IDE platforms. And then again, if you need to deploy, you need to jump to multiple hubs, different systems, and all of these systems perform differently. 
and then uh, it ultimately reduces your productivity too. Now, what can we do better? Again, so here is the notion of defining golden paths. That again goes back to the conversation where you need to identify your developers and what are the common tasks they want to do. Like I said, uh, it, most of the cases, in most of the workflows, developers want to contribute code and deploy that software to production. But not everyone, everything needs to be complex. They don't need to go to same, so multiple hops. So you need to identify what, what does it take to uh, uh, achieve the outcome, right? So what are the, how do you bake your best practices in a well-defined path? So that way, they just need to care about like following the established process or established uh, workflow. You need to reduce operational surfaces. So there are plenty of hops as, as a developer we are jumping in. What if we can uh, reduce that operational surfaces? It also lesser, uh, we need to uh, reduce the cognitive load. So developers don't need to go to the, go to the different places to get the information. And most important thing is, what if as a developer, I can get the timely feedback loop? So when I'm performing a, performing a software delivery or I'm trying to deploy a change, what, what it will be better if I can get the timely feedback loop within my IDE and better information discovery. So again, it goes back to there should be a defined path. What do I need to take action on and how do I go about it? All right. So we talked about multiple hubs, different things. So at Adobe, one of the steps, what we have done is we have created the custom IDE plugins uh, and we have wrapped all our golden paths, simple workflows into the custom IDE plugin. The core idea behind the, creating these plugins is developers don't have to jump hops to hops. So they can, uh, they can create their code, they can contribute to their code, they can deploy, they can monitor the deployment status they can correct the information within the IDE. So that way they don't need to go outside of IDE. And developers are only required to go outside IDE when there is a additional metadata or information they need, to, uh, they need to get in order to debug or solve issues. But what happens with this is uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we were able to reduce a lot of, uh, we, we were able to reduce a lot of cognitive load and developers, were, uh, developers didn't have to worry about like, oh, where is this information available or how do I correct it, where should I go and all that. So that all workflow is built within the IDE plugin. Now, we, uh, as the first phase, we have started with VS Code and IntelliJ. And how did we identify, like these are the primary IDEs. So in order to determine that, we again need to go back to the service. Uh, we asked our developers, what is your tech stack look like? what are the primary IDEs you uh, work on, and what are, the, what are the bottlenecks? Where do you feel frustrated? And then the IDE is also able to do that dynamic configuration management. So the, when the workflow starts, uh, we generate a static template with all, with all the configurations which we can show, the, which developers can see. And at that time, it also allows developer to change any configuration on the fly. If once the configuration is finalized, then it takes that as a source of truth or input, and it does all the magic behind the scene. What we also achieved is like reduction of operational surfaces. So because of everything, every workflow, simple workflow is driven through the IDE, so now developers don't have to go through 10 different places. We have also enabled, uh, recently we have also enabled a chatbot support within the IDE plugin. So now if, if the deployment fails, if there are any configuration errors, you can get a live chatbot support, which is again mining all the information from the deployment failures, all the Slack notifications, everything, and suggesting developers how, what are the corrective steps. But again, they still stick to the ID, they still correct it, and they still drive their workflow from there. This is how it works. So now a, a, there are three phases involved. One is how do developers discover there is an IDE plugin? So in order to do that, we have enabled it in the developer onboarding guide. So as soon as a new developer joins Adobe, uh, they, they, in, the, in their onboarding guide, they get the information about these IDs and golden flows. Uh, these custom IDE plugins are available to download from Artifactory, GitHub, 
and we also use Backstage as a IDP, internal developer platform. So from there also you can get that information like there is something like this which exists and you can download and start being productive as soon as possible. You can install the IDE plugin, uh, it's internal IDE plugin. So you can install it via CLI or you can install it via VS Code IDE. And then uh, you can see on the third screen, you can see all the options which are available for the developers. So there are plenty of options developers can drive from the IDE, for example, generating a new software, contributing it back and things like that. Some of the steps you can see here is uh, when I am a developer, I am generating a new software, it automatically commits to the GitHub and opens that in the ID. So even you don't need to clone that and you need to go anywhere else, it automatically does that for you. These are the multi, and you can see all the steps, all the logs within the ID. These are essential logs or the metadata, whatever developers, whatever is necessary for the developers. Now, there are more examples. This, this example is showing the deployment failure. So we use Argo a lot to deploy our software. Here you can see like what, what are the status of different resources which you want to deploy, what, are, what is healthy, what is unhealthy. You can get the more information if anything is failing because there is a limit what you want to put in your ID. You don't want to make it heavy and then your ID starts crashing. So this, this also uh, helps developers to debug information and create information and whatever they want to do. Now, what we have achieved with all this. So we again ran the survey for the new developers and we have saw a significant uh, improvement in their frustrations. So we started seeing, oh, this, uh, the, because of the golden flow or golden path is wrapped in the IDE, we don't need to jump hops to hops. So you can measure that in the happiness service. Then they have also higher confidence. Again, they don't need to dig the information. They can be productive right away before they start digging more in the code or existing processes and things like that. One of the metrics at Adobe we measure is mean time to hello world. So that's the metrics when a new developer joins Adobe and he start contributing to the code. So that, that was, reduct, uh, there was a significant reduction. We started measuring that and uh, so what are the key takeaways? So one is developer experience is directly related to developer productivity. So always focus on creating a better developer experience for your developers. Everything need not to be complex. Not everyone is writing Photoshop at Adobe. Lot of softwares are just, lot of softwares are just services or I want to quickly deploy my application to uh, production. You need to identify and define golden path what are the steps your developers need to take in order to deploy the software to production? And then think about how you can uh, reduce the operational surfaces so that developers don't need to jump hop to hop. And always remember, happy developers write happy code. So. And yeah, I have included the helper links. How do you, how you can start? I have also given the sample code. So yeah, this is my Twitter barcode, the left side and right side LinkedIn. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me and I'll take any questions if you may have. Sorry? Okay. So the question is, how do we measure adoption uh, of these plugins and how do we identify what plugins we need to create? So there are two ways to do that. One is we continuously serve the, uh, send the surveys to developers to identify what are the potential uh, developers like personas or what kind of developers they are, what kind of tech stacks they are using and what kind of IDs they are using. That helps us prioritize what plugin we need to make. Second is uh, we con constantly collect the data from their interaction through the IDE as well. Like what is their behavioral pattern when they are using the IDE plugin. And time to time we also send them surveys from the IDE like how do you rate your interaction with the IDE plugin 
on a scale of 1 to 10, so that also generates the NPS for us. So it surveys are uh, mostly sent in once a month. So that way we, are able, we are able to identify uh, the behavior. So, so Adobe's uh, developer persona is around, I mean, for sample size of our survey is around 3,000 developers. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it is. So two to 3,000. Yes because there is a fine line how many questions we ask, so we don't ask more than five questions at a time. If it takes... Exactly, yes. So, no. <laughs> so if, if there are so many questions, uh, I mean, it's, we drive it from top down and bottom up both. So like at the leader level, yeah, there is a survey out there, your team needs to fill out the survey, but at bottom up, it's also like, okay, as a developer, how do you feel? Ultimately, if we ask too many questions, it's, it's again a productivity loss. Yeah, right. I, I like <laughs> yeah. and they are annoying. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, one final question, sorry. So that's an interesting question. So the question is, how do we find developers, uh, like usability of these plugins over a period of time, once, once the information is bigger and developers are comfortable with the process. So for new developers, there is a value proposition. For existing developers, the, again, it also serves as the core metadata. They can get within the ID, and we don't restrict developers to go to the external systems or getting additional metadata where the source of truth are. But uh, based, on, based on the experiences, uh, I would say it is still being used in their developer flows because it is, there are still golden paths wrapped in here. So depending upon the use case, what use case they want to solve in, they are still using that. And you, go ahead. Yes, so again, the question is, do we, are we being prescriptive with the tools and technologies or whether there is a term called developer autonomy to bring their tools and frameworks? So at Adobe, it's a huge organization. Uh, the prescription doesn't work. Only thing what we can do is defining the golden path. So there is a value proposition if you follow the default flow versus if you bring something on your own. If you follow the default flow, you will get these many benefits. Versus if you bring your own technology, there will be nuances. And we also, one of the places where we want to be prescribed and we try to be prescriptive is uh, what you can bend versus not. So as a developer, what, what, are, what, are, the pla what are the places where I need to, uh, you cannot change because I need to get cert certain telemetry. Versus technologies and tools, there is a maturity framework like what you can bring in and things like that. But at development phase, we don't want to stop. We don't stop developers at all to not use anything. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much.